spoilers, spoiler free version is in the description. Okay. So I was really skeptical that this movie was going to be good. Because from the trailers I went, okay, this is literally just the first movie again. But it's taking a very minor character and making him the main character. This is going to be really dumb. But I had a free pass to go see it. It was a free pass for any movie that's been out for more than, I think, five days. It's like, well, it's been out for like two weeks. I guess I might as well go see it. I've been hearing good things about it. I should go see it. And, and I'm glad I did. I actually liked this one better than the first one. You know, the first one, obviously, was just set up for this one. This one is the, is, is the better of the two so far. I mean, I'm assuming they're going to make a third one based on how this one ended, but we'll get to that. We'll get to that. But yeah, so the first one, obviously, was just Groundhog Day, and I thought it was good. It had a creative premise. It was pretty well executed, but it wasn't like that was the best thing. I was like, yeah, that was good. Okay. But this one, I went, no, this one was actually very fun, very creative. It did something original. And then it kind of explained how the time loop started, which when they said that they were going to explain that, I'm like, do we want to know that? Is that going to ruin the mystery of the first movie? Because you don't really want to know how things work with sometimes with these kinds of movies. But no, the way they did it was very creative and very well done. I really enjoyed um, saying this. And everyone is just so good in the cast. Everyone just kind of did their thing. This actually was a lot funnier, too, than I was, I was expecting. Um... Yeah, I was saying, actually, I kind of enjoyed how they took the alternate ending from the first movie. So if you've seen the alternate ending, it ends up being the one professor and his wife who were the killers. I liked how they took that. Like, they removed it after negative test screenings for some reason, because originally it was going to be that she does die for real, like, at the very end. It doesn't wake up and it's like, okay, no, negative test screenings. I'm glad they didn't. I'm glad that they stuck with the ending of the first one that they went to, especially with the whole, like, misdirection at the end of that one. But um, I like how they took that and went, okay, no, this time it really is the professor. Because uh, I mean, he seems the most likely suspect in the first one, so I was kind of surprised that it wasn't, which I guess was kind of the point. It was you know, more of a red herring. But I'm glad that they made him the, the killer in this one. That, that was an interesting thing. I didn't see that coming. I went, okay, I don't know who it could possibly be this time, since... It's obviously not her roommate this time around because she's nice in this universe. But it was very, it was a very compellingly written movie too because it actually had a lot of um, themes that explored. It was, it was more of hey, if I'm in an alternate universe where everything's perfect, but somebody I'm close to has to die for me to remain in this universe, would I be willing to sacrifice them for my own happiness? if it means them dying. and I mean, it's not just her. Every character has this moment. I was like, this is better than the first one. This is very... This is more compelling than the first one. The first one was just Groundhog Day, but this one's more like The Flash. Like an episode of The Flash with like the alternate timelines after he screws everything up. Or an episode of Black Mirror. It's very... This one's more of a sci-fi than it is a horror. It has some horror elements. Like, there's always, you know, the tropes and the cliches of, oh, they're in the basement, and they're being stalked, and they're walking very slowly. Let's open the door. Oh, they're not there. Oh, it's behind them. Or they're going to back up slowly. And I'm just like, it's behind you. It's behind you. He's behind you. He's behind you. Oh, look at that. He's behind you. Right? It does have those. But those are very few and far between. That's maybe 10% of the whole movie. The rest of it is very much focusing on, are we going to stay in this alternate universe? How am I going to leave this parallel universe? You know, like th things like that. It, it was more of a sci-fi than it was a horror. You know, the, the who's the killer point takes up this much in the movie. It's practically not even the same. It's, it's such a drastic tone shift from the first movie, but it works. It works well. And I really liked the end where it's like, oh, well, we made the machine. Who should we test this machine on? And it ends up being the roommate <laughs> that nobody likes. Like, yes, karma, instant karma. Uh, so I'm hoping that the third one involves her and she ends up having the, kind of the same redemption arc that Tree has in the first one. Because she's a jerk, too. I thought like, maybe she'll have a redemption arc. Maybe she'll come around in the third one. Who knows? I'm excited to see where this goes. I am... Very excited for a third one, if a third one ends up happening. I don't see why it wouldn't. It's already made a ton of money, and it came out, like, two weeks ago, so... 
which is why I was the only one in the theater <laughs> when I went to go see it. I'm like, God, oh, this movie's been out for two weeks. I'm going to use your free pass because even if I don't like it, hey, I didn't pay to see it. I saw it for free. So but I'm glad I did. I'm like, yeah, that was actually worth it. I didn't go on the discount day, and it was actually worth it. So I'm glad I saw it. I really enjoyed it more than I did the first one. 